What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a new tool today and mm -hmm. we're going to work on getting this sucker tuned up. So a little background. This is a late 1980s Grizzly 8 inch joiner and should be a sizable upgrade figuratively and literally over my old Harbor Freight 6 inch jointer. That thing's actually worked really well over the years but it's a little bit underpowered and a little bit undersized for what I'd like to do. So. I saw this come through on my local classifieds and I happened to get lucky and was kind of first in line to get it. I managed to get it home, get it unloaded, all appendages and body parts still intact after that experience. Ended up using ratchet straps to pull it up out of the bed of the pickup, move the pickup out and set it back down. It doesn't have the helical head like some of the upgraded joiners do, so that's kind of a bummer. But it does come with an extra set of knives, so that's good because these are kind of dinged and chipped and dull. The other set of knives are all sharpened, ready to go. I just need to swap them out. It's got the slider back here where you can actually adjust this, right? So you're not wearing out the same place on your blades. It's got tilt and all that. Nobody ever really uses that, but it's there in case you need it. Earlier today, I went to Home Depot and got 30 feet of, what was this, 12-2. SO cord. So SO is the, it's this wire that's basically designed for power cords. Yeah, so I figure I'll probably put about, oh, probably a 10 foot cord on this and then make about a 20 foot drop cord because this tool, my table saw, and my planer all run off of 220 volt, uh, 20 amp service. And I only have one of those outlets in the shop right now. So with a longer drop cord, I can put the planer or the jointer anywhere I want in the shop and be able to use them. So that's the game plan. I think first things first, I'm gonna kind of just disassemble some of this. Um, this assembly is actually kind of misaligned and I need to pull some of this off and like reset that. So I think I'll just kind of take things apart, get them all cleaned up, get them lubricated, clean off and wax the bit ways in the bed um, yeah, just give her some TLC, and then once I get all that stuff done, I'll go ahead and swap the knives, uh, and she should be good to go. Anyway, that's enough yammering. I will, yeah, bring you back in a second, and let's get this thing ready to cut. All right, so we got this all sanded down and cleaned up. All the rust is removed. Everything's nice and smooth and even. So now we're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned off and ready to finish. So to do that, we're gonna use acetone, but you could use whatever solvent that you like. Um, the main reason I'm using acetone here is that since it evaporates nearly instantly, I don't have to sit here and wait for this to dry off before I can move forward. So get your solvent on a rag and come across here and just wipe all your surfaces down. Um, be careful that you don't start taking paint off. Some of these solvents will start to take your paint off pretty quickly. And we're just gonna go over all of these parts real quick and get them all nice and clean. For me, I prefer to use paste wax on my cast iron surfaces. There's probably other products that you could use. Um, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. So what you do is you get your paste wax and a, and a clean rag, dig out a chunk or two, put it in your rag here, and just wad it up in the center, and then start twisting. And what that does is it'll concentrate all your finish down in a bowl, 
we're just going to start at an area on here and start rubbing this in and the friction and heat will cause it to ooze out of the cloth and you're just looking to put down a film over all the exposed surface area of your tool so take your time be nice and thorough you can't really put too much on because you're going to come back and buff this off it's going to make it so that your tool doesn't rust obviously so that's your primary goal with this and your secondary purpose for this is that it gives a nice like friction reduction effect. So this can start to get really important for larger surface tools because you have more surface touching your well, your beds. So we've got the whole thing waxed down. You got this kind of film of the wax on the surface. You're going to take rags or paper towels and come back and your goal is to basically buff it all back off. You're not actually going to get all of it back off but basically pretend you're trying to and just buff the hell out of it and it should go from this flat kind of sticky pasty looking surface to just a nice polished sheen once you get it buffed in enough. Alright so the next thing we need to do is get this assembly taken apart and get it all cleaned up and basically do the same thing that we did for the main table and do it for this. All right, here's the next day, and we are back here in the shop working on the jointer. As you can see here, the actual power cord for this thing is only four feet long, maybe. So I'm gonna get those swapped out, and then we will switch gears and get the blades swapped on this thing. Then I think she'll be pretty much ready to put to work. So yeah, let's get to it. Alrighty, we got the box all reinstalled. Everything went together nicely. Let's go ahead and see if this thing still works. Turn it on here. Sounds like it. She's noisy, but she works. But I think the next thing for us to do is actually is to install the joiner knives. So. Let's go ahead and, well for one, let's unplug it because anytime you work on sharp tools like that, you always want to unplug them because that's a good way to get hurt. Um, or not doing that is a good way to get hurt. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, so let me go grab the new knives and get you set up here and let's get the knife swapped out. So what we're doing is I've got a ruler on top of here. Now we fiddle with this back and forth. Okay, that's the highest point. So we'll leave it there. Move this up out of the way. And then I'm going to use this square that I've got touched up against this blade. We'll make a mark on the fence. Now you could scribe this, but I don't trust the position of this fence enough to scribe it that I would trust putting a permanent mark there. We've got our little alignment jig here. Move this out of the way.
Alrighty, we got her all put back together and all the blades are installed and adjusted so I've got them all tightened down, got the guard on, we're gonna turn it on and see if it shoots a knife out through the window or through the roof, sorry, can't talk. Fingers crossed, here we go. Yeah, that seems to be working a little bit better. I think this angle's a little off, but I don't know. I'm gonna grab a square seat. Nope, that's pretty good. 90 degrees. Yeah. Alrighty, everybody. I think that's a wrap for now. She's all tuned up and cutting good. We've got new blades, new power cord. I got a new belt on the way, but I'll just change that. You don't need to see that. It's pretty simple. You just change the belt. But yeah, I'm super excited. I can now join an entire 2x8, one shot, no problems. So that's a hell of a lot more capacity than this old girl had, a little six inch joiner. So it's amazing what a couple extra inches will do, you know what I mean? I'm gonna finish cleaning up the shop here a little bit and we're gonna sell that old jointer. And yeah, new tool, new capabilities. I'm excited to build some new projects on it. That's all I got for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you get any cool tips or mods I should do to this, let me know in the comments. The main things are done and she's good and functional. So that's all I got for this video. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.